me in his presence. And this the Bible will tell them all the angels of the wild love him holy, holy. We just say with heaven. I swim to all of them. Amen. Say the Miller Pike. You have the Chilas collection for the glory of God. Amen. Stack your collection. Would you all pray with me? Father God, I must be in Jesus' name. We thank you that was for the privilege you give. That was the Suchi, oh Father God. Thank you for blessing us that went through this week, Father. We pray that you continue to lose it. Amen. Bless that a lot of tithes and offerings and more. For your glory, oh Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
in that village there was a large, a large crowd and there was also a funeral procession coming out, approaching the village gate, and the young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. And the day was her only son, she was a widow, Nazla Wong, a canal of Shavmo, and you saw it from 14 or 13. When the Lord saw her, you don't even know. You don't even know. I owe Jesus the help of me. We don't even realize that Jesus the help of me. She didn't realize it, but when Jesus saw her, his heart was overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Don't cry. Don't worry. Then he walked over to the coffin, touched it, and the barrier stopped the men that were carrying the casket. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Now he uses authority again. Then the dead boy stood up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. I want to just give you a little more example about what she was going through. Just a little off the shop. That's good enough. But can I tell you, a widow at the Catalogia South Hall, a widow in these days, the Nazla shop, there was no one to take care of her. So not only was she hurt and discouraged, but saying to her, be fearful. What's going to happen to me? What now is going to take place? And if she owed anything to anybody, she owed Aileenas Lata, Lapokur, Lapostafo, just to repay that. And not only does the discouragement and the and the and the and the 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 but he fear of that, the uncertainty, so should they help me? So many kalala te hara. What's tomorrow? Once I bury my son, what's going to happen tomorrow? So Jesus didn't he just have compassion on her. To give her her son back. There's no compassion, so they don't want no fear, or worry, or concern. I suck at that manga. Maybe we're worried about what tomorrow holds, what's going to happen, what's going to, what's the plan now, what happens. Make them to the Baupari, Chipacha, Chipotina. Amen. Make them to Baupari, Fate, Sol, Deja, Sangre. He gave it back to her. He'll give it back to us. Whatever we lost, whatever we're, whatever we're worried about, God will give us back what we need, Deja, Sangre. Amen. I want you to notice something about this, which is amazing to me. It was unrequested. She never asked. She never said, Jesus, can you come over here and help me with my son? She never said, Jesus, I need your help. She was so torn apart. She was so beaten up. She was so low. She didn't have the strength they would do. She didn't have the strength they dealt to her. She didn't have the strength to look up and see that Jesus was there. But thank God for his compassion. The Lord declared He seen her and unrequested the Lord. I know what you're worried about. I know what you're concerned about. Let me show you my authority mixed with my compassion. And the dead got up. How many know that we, God knows our hearts? Even before the words are said, even before the thoughts are made, He knows our hearts. I won't told, I know what you need. I know what you're praying for. Not that I. I'll make it go forward. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of the future. That takes us to another scripture. How many know that Jesus fed the 5,000? Right? Beautiful. Did you know right after that he fed 4,000? Right after that. Look what it says. Go to Matthew, Josh. Matthew 15, 32 to 38. When he fed the 5,000, what a beautiful thing that was because he just heard from this Ovoro, John the Baptist. I saw the Lord and he healed the people and he fed them. What a compassionate God. And here it is again. 
later on, in Matthew 15, 32, before Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. <laughs> I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and they have nothing to eat. I don't want them. I, I don't want to send them away hungry or they will collapse on the way. Do not let anyone don't think that Jesus is concerned about our future. Oh Jesus, that way, oh Jesus, what will happen along the way? They're here now, but I'm worried about what's going to happen along the way. Feed them. I'm compassionate towards them because they're following me. They're doing their best. I cheat my mouth. They do contra down the road. How many times you heard this before Divano? Every time I get closer to God, something happens. I have a it keeps us from getting closer to God. I want to tell you, God protects you. God is concerned about you. His compassion is for you, not just where you're at tonight, down the road. I come on talking, I have compassion on them. Because they've been with me. Not any sign that Jesus doesn't see you following him. Not any sign because Jesus doesn't see you uh, uh, sacrificing for him, making the right decisions, praying, worshiping God. Don't think that God doesn't see that. To hear Kakamotope, Jesus saw that I did not have compassion. They've been with me. They're following me. His disciples answered, where could we get enough bread in this remote place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied, and a few small fish. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish. And when he had given thanks, he broke and gave the disciples. And in turn, they gave it to the people. He saw the They all ate and were satisfied. Can I tell you, the compassion of Jesus will satisfy us. Nothing in this world will satisfy you like the compassion you can trust the compassion of Jesus to satisfy you. Money, sooner or later, you're going to spend. Cars, sooner or later, you're going to break down. Houses, sooner or later, you're going to have a leak, a leaky pipe, or you're going to have a roof leak. Sooner or later, it's going to be problems. But when you can trust on the compassion of God, they don't do something to hold you up, to make you satisfied. Maybe we're not satisfied enough because of the love and mercy and grace of Jesus that we're looking for something else. Have you ever thought about the grace and the mercy and the love that you don't deserve, that I don't deserve? When I think of that, that should satisfy me. But I don't have this, I don't have that. But what I don't deserve, that's not. That satisfies me. Devil, you've done enough. Thank you. And when he sees that, like he saw them following, he saw them I have compassion. Feed them. Satisfy them. Give them. Make sure they're okay. They're not to cut them down the road. The number of those who ate were 4,000 men besides women and children. <laughs> nothing's impossible for God. And a God that nothing's impossible for, with the compassion that he has, show what we can't lose. How can we lose with Him on our side? How can we lose with this Almighty God that can do anything and then has that compassion by the Kalame? Because the love of compassion came, it came uh, unrequested. This compassion came unexpected. Nobody expected Jesus to feed them. Nobody following Him that day thought well, today we're going to eat from the seven loaves and the little fish. Today Jesus is going to... No! They were just following Him. I just, we can expect God to do great things, but not into the church. Not into Baladel for what He can do. Not into Baladel for what He can give you. Let to Baladel because He's a loving, merciful God who gave me and you what we don't deserve. And that unexpected compassion will satisfy us. Amen. Just follow God for who He is. Follow God for who He is. 
He's a God who gives undeservingly. And that's what takes us to our next story. There's a story in the Bible game. Casual lawyer of the law, Jewish law, the look at Jesus. I prescribe, what do I got to do to be saved? I have Jesus to ask, you know the, the commands, uh, the one who shall us the Shema, uh, love your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your brother as you love yourself. I will come as I've done that. What more must I do? I will love Jesus, and that is the story. And we all heard the story. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. I have a good Samaritan who told the Jewish Gashul Shabbos, a Jewish Gashul, can you a Jewish Gashul? Jewish Gashul. Jewish Gashul Shabbos from Jerusalem. I Shabbos, I'm on Deles, I put on Deles, and they left him for dead, Chod Deles. I have you all, Rasai, and just what I told you, Rasai wouldn't touch a dead body, you go near it, Sonakalis. By chance a priest, a 31 touch. By chance a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed the road to the other side of the road and he passed by. A temple assistant, a worker of the company, Kangarakomanos, walked over and looked at him laying there. But he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan. You know why it says that? Because it was suitable. I was Samaritan. They didn't get along. So if this, if this suitable that was left for dead, if he had any breath in his body, he would have thought, Rasai na kama, worker la kama la kama la kama, chikaro kanchi mama kako Samaritan. Because I don't deserve him to do anything. Because I'm in the dogs. I'm in the dogs. You're not a part of us. I'm in the We don't want nothing to do with you. So why should he do something for me? Then a despised Samaritan came along. And when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan. Suited his wounds. How many know that God soothes our wounds? We don't deserve it. But when we're hurting, like Chandra Chiki Kalkoni, Karasan Bokbo, Wohat, and Lemoto, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. He soothes our wounds. We don't deserve it. We were enemies of God, Moto Levi. If I don't know that once we were in the darkness, and now Jesus is soothing our wounds. Undeserved compassion. Going over to him, the Samaritan suited his wounds with olive oil. Then as we give our oil, the Bible represents the Holy Spirit. I have little do for the Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Forget about the wounds. Don't worry how bad they hurt you. Don't worry about how bad you're hurt. Let's keep going. And with wine, there's a soup wine in the Bible. Give it represents. Joy. It also represents the blood of Jesus. And can I tell you that the blood of Jesus will bring us joy in times of trouble, in times of need. Whenever we're down and out, whenever we're concerned, that he suited his wounds with oil and with wine. Holy Spirit, bring joy back to your people through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. He bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. He didn't have to go that far. He didn't have to go that far. Suited his wounds. Muloi, Mo, Dusta. Dusta is good. But then he put him on his donkey, went out of his way and took him to an inn. The compassion of Jesus Christ is far beyond what we deserve. It goes far beyond what we think. The compassion of Jesus, you think the compassion is uh, uh, just what well, he loves me. No, no, it goes beyond that. He's concerned about you going home. He's concerned about the world ahead of you. He's concerned about your children. He's concerned, He's concerned what you're concerned about, but even more. He knows what you don't know. 
He knows where to lead you or to guide you. We just need to be in Him. I teach you this with compassion. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. How many know that Jesus paid a price that we can never repay? Give God some glory. Now, which of these, now will Jesus to show at that little lawyer, which of these would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked? Then the man replied, the one who showed mercy. At least what that is for Jesus. Now you go and do likewise. Now you go and do the same. Church, I want to talk to you about application. Beautiful scriptures tonight. How many thank God for the beautiful stories and scriptures tonight? It does. Let's go mercy. Let's go grace. Let's go compassion. Challenge out if I don't go and do this thing. I'm not saying that I'm not about a class. No, but I can give up my time. I can give up a little bit of my will to help someone else. I can call someone and pray with them. I can stop what I'm doing. I can kill the Netflix, stop what I'm doing, and call somebody and say, hey, I just want to pray with you. Maybe I don't have to go to that place. Maybe I'll just go to a, a brother. I a karab is up will just pray. Because they don't know what they're hearing they're going through. This is probably the we're gonna end with this scripture. Put up lamentations. God has always been a God of mercy. It didn't start with Jesus. Jesus is God. And God has always been a God of compassion. Dick Sonal told Lamentations 3.22. This is the Old Testament. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Genesis second a little bit. It can consume us. Dick Sonal told about the wages of sin is debt. But the gift of God is eternal life. That's the compassion we have from God. But because of His great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. His compassion for those people that didn't eat, didn't fail. They got fed and they were satisfied. His compassion for that woman didn't fail. She got her son back. His compassion of the story, the Good Samaritan, the compassion that the Gajo had, took care of the man's wounds, took care of his needs, got him back up on his feet. I got God, the compassions of God for us never fail. Nick told, they are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. They are new every morning. You want to know what it means? You want to know what he's saying? The first time you saw that gajo at the red light. The first time you saw that gajo at the red light and be low and you didn't know what to do for him. That's the way he sees us every single day. Every single day you get up, he has that same compassion on you. Every day you get up, he has that. It never fails, it never gets lighter, it never gets smaller. It's that same way you felt. So How can I help? What can I do? I'm greater than him because I can help him. What can I do? That's the same way he sees me and you, Paul. Every single day, every morning, his compassions are new. You're not running on old compassion today. You're not running on old mercies. They're new. He sees you like he sees that woman, the widow, concerned, worried, discouraged, and who give you back what you need to go forward. He sees you like he saw the 4,000. And he'll give you what you need to be satisfied. They're not Perez going. The journey's too hard. He knows. I pen up to, try up to, to get through. He sees you like he sees that wounded man that was beaten for no reason. Maybe you've been hurt for no reason. To Kadastavarakun for no reason. He'll bind your wounds. He'll give you back your joy. And he'll go above and beyond. Which he already did. 
But here's the application. We just learned about the great compassion of Jesus. The great compassion of God. And we're going to close with the words of Jesus Christ. Go and do the same. And it was this. Father, your love and your compassion cannot be compared to anything. Unrequested, Father, you had compassion. Unexpected, you had compassion. Undeserved, and you still had compassion. Thank you for being not only the God of authority, but the God of compassion. We're forever grateful tonight that you had compassion on us. I was dead in the water. I was in the darkness. I was blind. I was lost. You opened my eyes. You found me. You brought me into your beautiful light. I was dead and you gave me life. And I can speak for every one of us here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having compassion on us. Even when we couldn't call on your name, you had compassion on us. Thank you, God. Thank you. Help us to do likewise. Help us to do the same. We can't do it in our own strength. It won't work. We have to be in you. Help us to walk in that spirit. The spirit of God that you left here for us to teach us, remind us. Help us to walk in him and we will walk in compassion for others. Father, I thank you for your blessings. They never fail. Thank you for the blessing we read in Lamentations tonight, that your mercy and your love never fails. It's new every morning. Thank you for new mercies. Thank you for new grace. Thank you, Devla. Thank you that you don't get disgusted of me. Thank you that you don't get frustrated with me. Thank you that you don't get upset with me. But, Devla, you're always there to what was okay. Let's start again. And for that, Devla, I should live for you. Help me, God. Help me, Lord. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord smile upon you. May the Lord give you His favor. May the Lord give you His grace. And may the Lord grant you His everlasting, never-ending peace. Father, would you not be able to understand the Lord? Sajasta Deva, Nikara me saste Deva. Alaka mara kids, alaka mara familia Deva, alaka men Deva. Deva, we just thank you tonight for learning about how compassionate you are, the great and awesome God that you are, the God of authority, yet you have compassion on us, undeserving, unexpected, and unrequested. Thank you, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you.